first case that we'll be looking at today is Diageo Brands and another versus Great Galleon Ventures Limited. Uh, now, the thing to keep in mind is that in the first two cases, both of them involved Diageo as a plaintiff and the registered design in question is the same. Uh, it was just that the issues that were decided in these two cases were different as against the infringing product also. So coming to the first case, this was a suit for design infringement and for uh, passing off of trade dress. Now the plaintiff, the Archio Group, uh, they own many trademarks and designs. And the design in question here was for the 180 ml hipster bottle, which was also sold in the form of pocket scotch by the plaintiffs. This product was launched in 2018 and the plaintiffs claimed that this design was based on that of a smartphone and which was a very lean and sleek design and therefore different from the commonly known design of flasks, which were generally very short and broad. In 2021, the plaintiff had already obtained an injunction against the defendant, Great Galleon Ventures. And the defendants challenged this injunction in the year 2022 and also the validity of the plaintiff's registration. The defendants further claim that the plaintiff's design registration was not a prim prima facie evidence of the validity of the design and therefore uh, there should be no injunction granted against them. In this case, there were three uh, issues that the court had to deal with. So here you can look at the prior art which was presented by the defendants to challenge the validity of the plaintiff's design. And at the bottom, you can see the different views of the plaintiff's registered design. Uh, so the first view, uh, the first issue that the court dealt with was novelty. And the court found that there were six unique features of the plaintiff's registered design, which were basically one, a tall, lean and sleek look, a rectangular shape, smooth rounded shoulders, and a dimple bottom. And a few other features and the court found that these were not present in the prior art. Uh, the court further said that in such cases, even if physical articles of prior art are not produced, at least a clear perspective view of the prior art must be provided such that the design in question as well as the prior art can be clearly compared. And if there are any similarities between the prior art and the design in question, the same can be identified. The second issue that the court looked at was of uh, mosaicing. And here the court said that it should not dissect individual features of a design and try to find them in each prior art. And instead, a conspectus of features as a whole should be seen. Uh, and it said that the defendant will have to show a single prior art, which is similar to in order to claim prior publication. Different prior arts cannot be uh, mixed in order to come up with a prior art that would anticipate or affect the novelty of the design in question. Uh, further, the court found that this function was not purely, uh, sorry, the nature of the design was not purely utilitarian in nature and said that the test for cancellation is whether the design is dictated solely by function, which was not the case with the plaintiff's registered design, wherein although the court said that features such as the dimple bottom help in aiding the stability of the, uh, of the bottles. It was not solely functional in nature and had some aesthetic value as well. Uh, coming to the fraudulent imitation by the plaintiff, uh, sorry, by the defendant, the court said that the defendant had copied the design of the plaintiff. And since the defendant had admitted that it launched this design of its own products only in 2021, this clearly made the plaintiff the prior user of the design. And therefore the balance of convenience also lay in favor of the plaintiffs. Uh, as far as trade dress was concerned, however, the court uh, decided that the similarities that the plaintiff had presented, which were the black and gold color scheme and the labels and trade dress and the get up in general. The court found that apart from this black and gold color scheme, there were no other similarities as far as the appearance of the two products was concerned and found that these similarities were insufficient to grant an injunction for the, on the grounds of passing off. However, the court said that as far as design piracy is concerned, the plaintiff's case was strong enough and therefore upheld the injunction. Moving on to the second case, which is 
uh, the Aisho Brands versus Alco Brew Distilleries. As I mentioned, this uh, register design in question is the same. However, the issues here were different. So three issues had to be addressed by the court. Firstly, the fact that if there were features that distinguished the registered design from the prior art, and the same features also serve to distinguish this registered design from the infringing product, would there be infringement in such cases? The second issue was the standard of deciding novelty and infringement or the view through which novelty and infringement of the product would be decided. And thirdly, how could the plaintiff's design and the defendant's products be compared and what standard should be used for the same? Uh, so here there is a view of the registered design, which is in gray and the infringing product, which is the black and gold product of the defendant. So the defendant sold its products uh, as golfer shot 180 ml hipster and as pocket shot. So these were the two taglines that the defendants used. And they disputed the plaintiff's claim to the term hipster and also pocket scotch, stating that the plaintiff did not have registrations for either of these two products, either of these two marks, and therefore could not claim trademark infringement. Uh, so firstly, uh, what the court decided was that mere features that make the plaintiff's design novel and original and therefore different from the prior art may also serve the purpose of distinguishing the plaintiff's design from the defendants. The court stated if the suit design is novel and original vis-a-vis -vis prior art with respect to certain aspects and the defendant's design is similar to prior art in respect of those aspects, it necessarily follows as a logical corollary that the impugned defendant's design is novel and original vis-a-vis -vis the suit design with respect to the said aspects. The court relied on the B. Chavla and Carlsberg cases and found that Designs Act uses the term piracy instead of infringement and piracy implies that there is a certain amount of imitation or copying. It said that the imitation may either be obvious or uh, fraudulent and where the imitation is such that it stares one in the face, it would be obvious. On the other hand, there may be certain imitation which is subtle but is consciously done with a view to confuse the consumer and that would amount to fraudulent uh, imitation. With respect to the standard that is to be used for deciding novelty and infringement, the court said that the aspect of design piracy has to be examined from the point of view of the instructed eye that is a person who is instructed or aware of the prior art, reasonably discriminatory and able to appreciate enough detail. However, as far as infringement is concerned, the court said that the test of the average consumer who sees the bottles on a shelf from a distance may be used, but in certain cases, this test would not be the appropriate test to apply. The court denied the injunction in this case, finding that there was no design privacy.